Thank you, Brother Muhammad Sheikh, for your enlightening talk. Um, before I open the floor for the question and answer session, I would like to request the audience to please ensure that your questions are brief, concise, and to the point. Um, if you have any questions that are, uh, that are not related to the topic that was discussed tonight, you can contact our center and our administration can set up an appointment with Brother Muhammad Sheikh for your private consultation. We will give the ladies the opportunity to ask their questions prior to men and once we have covered the ladies section we will roll the mic over to the men's side and then you can proceed with asking your questions uh, please keep in mind your questions i will not allow any longer debates uh, it has to be to the point and brother mama sheikh will be able to address them now i would like to invite brother mama sheikh again to come and answer your questions brother mama sheikh Thank you. Amat Taj, brother. Yes. Waalaikumsalam. My question is that whether a defense saving certificate is riba or not. Yeah. Uh, again, that the, the use when you you want to buy a def defense saving certificate, you know, in, in, in exchange of money. So that money that you have saved, you are ask uh, having you want to purchase a certificate. The that money should be already 20% should be given from that money from beforehand. You understand? For example, you're putting 10,000 rupees. So that 10,000 rupees should be already a purified, justified money that you have given already the 20% from the 10,000. Now you have put it to, into the, uh, the saving certificate. Now you get money on it. And if, the, if it is a completely a profit that you're get, getting monthly or whatever, then on that money also you have to give 20 percent. You get you, get for, you, you put 10,000, you get 1,000 suppose. Then 800 you have to keep it for yourself. Two, 200 you will give to. That is is lawful because it's a deal. Anything that has to be done in the is is a deal. They are doing business from your money. They are giving you some little amount. You have agreed to amount that amount of profit. So that's a deal. That is allowed. My question is, uh, do we have to give Satka charity on BC pool money? Yeah, again, the pool, if the pool money, you are pooling that money, you must, as I was telling, the pool money should be, uh, when you have taken some amount of money, you, it should be a justified money. Your money that you will, you will be, how you will be giving out of, from saving. How we much? Have, we have already, already justified the amount we were getting uh, from our profits. No? Okay, you have justified from the money. money. Yeah. Now you can put in the pool money that you have already justified. You are just rolling that money. That is, then you don't have to give. Okay. You, you must understand, we, if we have justified money, 10,000 rupees, and you are putting a pool money, that is your already a justified money, and yeah. you are not saving. That again, money is coming back to you. You can, you're sharing with other people, helping other people as well. So that means that is, you don't have to give any uh, extra money on it. If somebody has not justified, then he... Then he has to do this, yeah. Do That's correct. Thank you. Well, Thank you for an exhilarating lecture. Uh, my question is like, uh, the women, they, they have a gold, a diamond, any other ornaments, precious ornaments, and else in form of jewelry. So do we have to give sadhka, that is charity on, the, on it? And uh, or our husbands are liable to do that. No, actually, the, the jewelry and all thing, all the assets in the form of uh, what you have got. So, if any amount, uh, like for example, if you have already given, if you have not given, let's let's take that. If you have not given, suppose, so you have to find out what amount that cost comes up to. Actually, you have to give at that time when you purchased the gold was less, and now that it has more money. So I can also ask you to give money at the previous account when you purchase that. At that time you did not give, you can justify that amount of money. You can take out 20% of that money at that time. Now, once you have given and now it's lying with you in the form of jewelry, you have justified all the jewelry of given 20-20% of all your money. Now you don't have to give further until some, your husband give you extra something then you have to give 20 on that. Any profit that 
is already been given, you don't have to repeat again and again. Now, even is getting the, the, the it is being increased. The gold price is being increased, and the the lesser the money value is. Now, once you go and sell that uh, one of the jewelry, and you get the profit on it, on that profit you give. Once you have justified all the jewelry, then you don't have to give every year. It is to be paid only at the time when we buy it. Yeah. No, you don't have to. No, you are not buying it. Suppose husband is giving yeah, give it to you. If you are buying it, you are buying it from your justified money. Right. You must remember, if you have got your extra money with you, lying with you, you must have already just justified. So you don't have to give at that time. You are buying it, that's your justified money. Keep it with you. You don't have to give anything. Or if the husband gives you as a gift, so it, it is added to you. Now, husband will not give. He's giving to you. The property has become yours. So it is a profit to you. So that profit on that profit, you have to give 20%. And with the raise and the price, whole uh, if, price. Uh, so if the raise price is increased and you have already given the 20% of your all jewelry, you do not have to give any more until unless you sell and the and then it increases the amount of money that you give. You have sure. to justify once. You don't have to justify again and again. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, please. Assalamu alaikum. You My sir. name is Imran Pesal and I'm working in a bank as branch manager. My question is in Surah Anfal, ayat number 41, the word Jaman, which you translated as two accumulations, whereas all other translators have translated it as two forces, troops, or combatants. Can you justify your translation of the word Jaman of two accumulations from any other ayat? Okay. Now, uh, the question is in Surah Anfal 841. Uh, if you know in Surah Al Humuza, that is 104 and ayah 2. The Arabic says, Alladi jama'a malam wa addada. Who accumulates and counted. Alladi jama'a. Jama means accumulate. Malam wa addada and then you count on it. There's one word in Arabic. If you, if you look at the translation of other scholars, they will, you'll find you will write this jama something like accumulation or addition. Now, Jama'an is a dual of two, two, two Jama. One Jama and the other Jama. If you met, you're meeting, the, the ayat was saying, one Jama was getting, Muhammad Rasulullah, as messenger is getting from the 20. The other is, is the consultant Jama, and they were accumulation together. So I'm just telling you, there's an ayat in the Quran where the word Jama is used, and the translation has also, they have used as accumulation. Now, if two jama'is will be jama'an, that means two. Again, then the, they have translated their forces. They are trying to put war in it. They are trying to, because they want to translate ghanim, their booty, and down below they want to show two jama as forces. If you look in the Surah Nasr 110 and 1 and Ayah 2, Ida jaa nasullahi wal fath, and when the help and opening victory of Allah comes, and you saw the people entering in the judgment of Allah in troops or forces or combatants. This word in Arabic, fawj means also forces. Afaj means forces or combatants. So this word is for combatants and forces, not for two jama'an. That is not two jama' means two accumulations, not two forces, which people have translated. So I'm also giving the translation of those people. Here the Afaj, you know, in Arabic also, in Urdu also, we know is a plural of Fauj. Many, many forces, too, too many. So here it says combatants and forces in the ayat, and there is Jaman, that is two accumulations. And in the diction you can see uh, additions to addition, Jama means, in Urdu also we understand the same word as Jama, Jama, Jama Karna. Yes, okay, thank you. Yes, please. Uh, my question is about an asset. That uh, what is an asset, and do we need to give charity or sadqa on yearly basis on that? Now, now after you see the problem is that if if suppose a person uh, when he gets the message and he understands what is the riba and everything, so if he's leading his life, so he can make an asset from the eighty. He is already giving 20 out of 100. He was going, giving 20, 20, and he, he was also making an asset. 
or buying things or car or the house or whatever. These, this, these assets are already justified assets in the nearness of God. But suppose a person comes in between, like for example, a person has half of his life is, is not given and he has made an asset. So in that situation, that person has to give what he's eaten. Allah is in the ayats explained what he's eaten and he's consumed on that Allah will forgive. But if he has made an asset of something, then on that asset he has to give 20. And for that Allah has given him easiness that he can make an installment or in any other way he has to give slowly and gradually so that the remaining of that money, remain of the bucket of the riba, he has to give. Because the head of that, suppose he bought a house of one, 100, suppose, whatever the amount. So out that 20 was to begin, but he did not give and he made an asset. What he has consumed, Allah will forgive. Consumption, he has eaten, he did not give in eating and he was eating and eating. That will be forgiven. But what in the form of asset, if he is not given, then he has to find out what amount he has to he had he had to give at that time, and on that money he can calculate of on all the assets like jewelry also and all the assets. So now on, on every all of the assets he should find out, and then according to his own plan he can Allah is giving him as to the easiness he should give that justified money. The running profit he will give from the running profit, and at the same time from that profit also he will give whatever the amount he is thinks that he has to. Easy, easily he has, can give because any person out, out of in between it made such a handsome amount of money for him is become difficult and he can also write down his will that this this amount of money has to be paid by me even if I die there is still has to be paid so like people write down wills so they put it on the will that this amount goes to this department or this department. so he can write down because this is the amount of money that has to be willed so that asset has to be also considered that from that if 20 is involved, it is not lawful, it has to be given to, back to the God Almighty to the zakat and justification. Okay, thank you. Now, Honorable. Gee, yes, please. Uh, 841, David Sula and Fal. Yes, please. Almost all the translators have said, Ghanim as booty. Booty. But you have jumped up to another word. Profit. That is profit. I would like to learn the name of the dictionary from where you go. <laughs> you see, you, you, can, you can find, I will give you, there are many dictionaries, but one of the dictionaries I can say, you can write down the name Arabic English dictionary by handswear. An amazing part, this Arabic English dictionary by handswear, edited by J. M. Cohen on page number 803, you can find this. You can write down the dictionary where you can find uh, the translation of Ghanim as, as prophet. Another Arabic English dictionary is by Stengas, page number 765. There are two different dictionaries in, 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 the, in the world and, and you can find that they have translated as Ghanim as prophet. And an amazing part is that if you tell, if you inform this uh, dictionaries to the these label Muslims, they said they are Jews. They are Christians. Any dictionary of the world has nothing to do with religion. They will just say what this word means in the world. So they've also put booty in the, in the, in the dictionaries. They've also put loot in the, in the dictionary because the Jews and the Christians, Arabs, are loot, looting the, because the Bible says that you loot and booty. After the war, you, you capture. So they, in the Bible, they have written down for loot. For them also in Arabic, they have word, used the word loot and booty also in, trans, in Arabic dictionary. But in Arabic, in Arabic language, they, have, they, they will write down booty, loot, and profit. Now you have to use your mind. Would Allah will ask us to loot the people or Allah is asking to give from the 20 or whatever the amount has come to? You have to use your intelligence. Part B of my question. The meaning of riba, you have said increase. How you got that? <laughs> <laughs> now, now the, the, again, in the dictionaries I will refer to, okay, the same Arabic English dictionary for handswear edited by J.M. M. Cohen, page number 374, Arabic English dictionary by Steingast, page number 400. Another thing is, the word is trans, the word increase is translated almost everybody in the ayah, our room 3039 
and Sul Bakra 226. Everyone has translated at the riba. I was, when I was giving my talk, I said, you circle this word, circle this word, it's the riba. And in the, if you look at the translation of every scholar, you will say increase. I am translating the word, the riba is increase, of course. But at the same time, other people is also translating. In Surah Rum 30, Ayah 39 verse, and Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 276 verse, where Allah says, I will read those ayahs if you want, that it says, Surah Rum 30, it says, وَمَا أَتَيْتُمْ مِنْ رِبَا لِيَرْبُوا فِي أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ فَلَا يَرْبُوا إِنْدَ اللَّهِ It says in Arabic, وَمَا أَتَيْتُمْ مِنْ رِبَا And whatever you give from the riba, means the increase. Liyarbu, so that you increase fi amwalin nas in the wealth of mankind. Fala yarbu, it does not increase in the nearness of Allah. The word root letter Arabic word riban, liyarbu, la, fala yarbu. It's the same root letters all the time. And all these three words, the meaning is increase, increase, increase. And all the translations of the world have translated here as increase. And one of the ayatah also I said in Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 276, Yam haqullahu riba, Allah cancels the riba, wa yurbis sadaqat, and again sadaqat, he increase. Again the word yurbi is used from the same root letter as riba, again the word here is, is increase the sadaqat, the charity. So there are, the, even here also the people have to translate the word uh, for riba yurbi is increase. In the dictionaries also mentioned, and as well as the Quranic ayat translations, people have translated the word as increase in one or two, the, these two ayats as well. Yes, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My question is, in Surah Al-Anfal 841, we get to know that Ghanimtu is profit. And uh, in your lecture, we got to know that savings, uh, profit is savings after expenditure. Is there any particular ayat that says profit is savings after expenditure? <laughs> no, there is no such ayat. I think everybody knows what is a profit. I consider profit ha, as ha, income ha. after tax that goes into my account if so, I'm working somewhere. Ha, okay. Or if I'm doing no, business. No, you can discuss what you want. Uh, if suppose you're working somewhere. Okay, and I'm earning 10,000. Okay, suppose you're earning 10,000. My, my agreement with the company is 10,000. 10,000. After tax, I get 9,500 in my account. Okay. Is that income for me? That is income, not saving. Now, that 9,500 rupees is your income by virtue you have to lead your life. Okay, you and there are certain expenditures. Expenditures, those expenditures you have to take care of your wife, children, or brother, or mother, or father, brother, sister. That you have to lead. Now, after expending on your parents and upon yourself, you save money for rainy seasons, rainy water. That is the, that is the profit Allah is asking. From that you have to give 20. And from that 20 you can buy anything Allah is not bought. You understand now? Everybody knows how, what is a profit. After the expenditures, Allah did not mention the Quranic guy specifically, but I know this, everybody knows that earning is earning. You may be earning one lakh, but that is earning. But you have got 80,000 expenditures. And there's a difference between buying and expenditures. Look, I, I, I want to buy a car. Suppose I've got a scooter and I, my expenditures are fulfilled. Now I'm saving some money to buy a car. So that saving from, I have to give 20. So you say, look, I always buy uh, things. That is also expenditure. Buying is not expenditure. Expenditures are by, by virtue whatever the status you're living in. Necessities. Necessities. Now you can improve your status by, by, by saving and from saving you give 20. You understand? You give 20 and then you still save and you can improve your uh, any amount of status. Second question. Yeah. If I give my 20% over here and I find, uh, I find out that there are certain relatives and there are orphans and there are uh, let's say masakin. Yeah. Mas, uh, masakin, the needy. Yeah. And I need to give them as well a certain amount. The so 20, can I? 20 has to be divided all the eight categories and all the eight categories if you divide 20 by eight comes two and a half percent. So normally two and a half percent the Malvi Sahib was asking to give for the Allah. Yeah. 
Give Allah's money, Baki 17 and a half percent you don't give. No, but if I give it over here at this center, no, 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 if, if I find out that no, there are few... No, 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 no. If you come to me, I will ask you who are your relatives, who are your orphans, who are your needy. We'll discuss. That was what I was saying in my lecture. That if you come to me, I will discuss with you. I will just do 20 like this. I say <laughs> that how many relatives you have got, any orphans and this. And then you say, yes, I've got this. So I'll give you back. You understand this? That I was trying to explain this. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Is the 20% what we give known as zakat? The word zaka, zaka means in Arabic justification. 20%? No, I, the word meaning zaka. Zaka means justification. Now, whatever the money that Allah has given me, I have to justify money by giving 20%. Because Allah has ordered me to give 20 so I am justifying my money. I am justifying the verse of Allah that says give 20. So I am justifying. I am doing, doing zakah. So I am justifying myself by giving 20. If somebody asks you, who are you giving 20? You will say the Quran says in Surah Anfal that Allah says you have to give one fifth ghanim profit from the prophet. So that is you are justifying to the person why you are giving money. What you give is sadaqa, charity. But you justify it. So in Arabic, zakah has got a broader meaning. You have to justify your acts. You establish a salah, you justify. You have got money, you justify. You are good to your parents, you justify. You are, have a good relationship with your wife and children, you have to justify. Zakah means justify your acts. Just say, normally people justify their bad acts. Actually, I was, why are you drinking? Actually, I want to leave the smoking, you know, this and this and this. I will be doing this. So they are trying to justify. Similarly, good acts, Allah asks you to justify your good acts as mentioned in the Quran. So the messenger came, Rabbana wa wa theme, Rasulam min hum yatlu alim ayatika wa yu alimul kitaba wal hikmata wa yu zakki him. That he will recite your ayahs, give knowledge of the book and, and give the knowledge of the wisdom and justify people. Meaning he will justify the actions as mentioned in the Quran that they are rightly things. So we Muslims have to justify our wealth also, our actions also. Zakat contains everything. You understand? Zakat is a big word. But once you give to somebody, it's charity. Why you give is justification. Why is zakat? Zakat means why you give, justification. The person who is receiving is charity. That is sadaqah. I hope. These, these words are basically not properly translated in the world. They say you give zakat. Of course, zikr, you are, it means you give justification. So where did 2.5% come from? They divided the 20 and 8 categories, they got the 2.5. Okay. 8 categories are mentioned and one category in that 8 category is Allah. So they were afraid of Allah, they give 2.5% two two of Allah, then remaining we will not give. Yes, please. My question is, what is the uh, uh, kharat? Kharat is a different uh, meaning? In, uh, in Arabic, in Arabic, kharat is for betterment. Mm. That also you can, like, like you, 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 sadaqa means charity. Now, if you want to better your life, you can give more than sadaqa also, or you want to give extra whatever. That is betterment. For, in Arabic, kharat means betterment. In Urdu means, uh, kharat is, is sadaqa. Arabic word sadaqa translated in Urdu is kharat means you are giving it for good. You don't expect him that he will return to you. And in Arabic words, khairat means for betterment, to improve yourself. And other question, what is the karze hasana? Loan. Uh -huh. Lo you give somebody to, lo you lo lo give loans to somebody and then you, you give it to God Almighty and expect him to return 70 times back to you. That is given to God Almighty, right? I actually had a question about uh, Surah 8 and Fal in uh, Ayah 41 uh, and the word actually which is Prophet, what is the action um, for a person because as a living, in, uh, living abroad, you don't actually have a lot of savings and if you, let's say if you want to buy a car, you pay a little bit and you get a loan and that actually <clears throat> adds into your expenses. So you're not actually saving for the car or for the home, you're paying by the month. So 
So I wanted to basically ask what would be legitimate expenses that those need to carry, and, and the, the, the remainder would be the, uh, the, the Venamto. So if you can elaborate on that, please. Thank you very much. And Salaam alaikum from Los Angeles. Okay, Walaikum Tasmeer, can you hear me? Uh, actually, again, the, the amount of money which you are, uh, people who are living abroad, they, they purchase uh, many uh, cars, uh, they buy a car or they buy other things as well as on, on installments. That's the, that's the procedure that is being uh, produced in the, mostly the Western countries or the countries of living, people living abroad. You can have them, but you must understand that that again, there, there, the amount of money that you are receiving, you know that this amount I'm receiving and I'm, I'm paying this installments. So the installments that you are paying for your car or your, for your house or what, that is from your profit. Otherwise, if there is no profit, you cannot pay the installments. So you must understand that whatever the install, because after, after the completeness of the installments, that you will be the owner of the car or you will be the owner of the house. So either you, what you can do is that you have to justify the money beforehand, installment that you have to pay, either you give 20 percent there and then because that is your saving, that, that is how you are paying the installments. Or if the, you are, you, when you become the owner of the house or you owner of the car, then you give 20 percent. I think it would be more suitable for Anything you pay the on you uh, pay the installments you give it beforehand. So beforehand, if you are giving 20 percent, so you are uh, buying everything on installments. Finally, it will be yours uh, from the justified money. I hope I answer the question. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, wa alaikum. Uh, my question is that uh, that during the lecture you said one thing that if any moment give money to pay the other moment's debt. Is he supposed to take it back from him? No. Or if he's not liable to pay, like pay the money? No, no. That, that gentleman asked a very good question, that loan of uh, Hasana. No, if you uh, cut it from the other person's salary. No, no, no. If I would like to explain to you, Surah Tawbah 9 and Ayah 60, surely the sadaqat, the charities are fuqra, those who are poor, and for the masakin, the needy, and for the Amilin, those who are working on the sadaqat, the charities, and for those whose hearts are composed and in riqab, who are in slavery, and for gharimin, those who have to pay fine, and for sabilillah in the way of Allah, and for the Ibn Sabir, the sons of the way. Now, I was referring to the person who is gharimin, in Arabic is Gharimin and they who have to pay fine. He this this they say that his neck is is stuck. stuck. Yeah. Okay, so this a person who is taking a loan from the bank or anywhere, he's stuck. Now he can't repay it back. So Allah said, give sadqa charity. The sadqa is for those. So he, you are not giving loan to him. That you can give from the twenty percent. Or the sadqa, you had a consultation with the messenger, you have got the money, and this, this person is stuck up, he is, has to pay a fine to the bank or anywhere, so you give money and forget, you are not giving a loan to him. You cannot ask it back. Because that is sadqa, sadqa is never asked back. The husband give it to you as sadqa, remember this. <laughs> remember all of you men, when you give to your wives as is sadqa tu hanna nihla, but as a gift. That sadqa charity is given to the, your wives as a gift. But so, if you ask it back, then what about the... No, you are not allowed to ask. You cannot. No, does, sadqa Does is, Allah persuade such people? Sorry? Does Allah persuade such people? If, uh, no, no, no. The does, point, you're not you're understanding the point. You see, sadqa charity, if I, somebody goes, if I go out, if I find somebody, poor fellow, asking for money, I give it to him. The second I say, I give my money back. You're saying like this. You okay. see, remember... Sadqa charity is something when you're giving to somebody, you won't even remember him. That's not yours. It was never yours. But giving a loan, you are giving, again, loan is, you're giving a loan from your Sadqa charity. Anything that you give from, from Sadqa charity was never yours. That's not yours. But from the 80, if you have you got a brother or a sister, that you cannot give Sadqa charity to your brother or sister. That you have to give from your 80. 
Now you can say, look, sister, I'm giving you from 80. I will want my money back. We can ask for that. Okay, one minute. But at the same time, suppose you found out your sister is not in a position to repay you back because of her circumstances. Now you want your money back desperately. So give it to Allah. That gentleman asked, give it to Allah as karza hasana. So have good feelings with your sister, Allah will repay you back. Instead of have bad feelings for your sister, she is taking my money all the time, having grudge. Give it to God Almighty. Okay. That is karza hasana. Forget it and tell her. Not only forget yourself, inform her. I am giving it to you, I am giving it to God Almighty and we have be good friends and believe me, Allah will repay you. So that is how you have good relationship again back with your sister instead of having grudges and all. You are asking the poor fellow to return, he cannot give it to you back. So give it to Allah, right? There is there's one more question. Uh, uh, you said in the, during the lecture there was an ayah about the consultation. I just want to ask the grounds in which a person is uh, liable to pay. Like if a person is in debt and he, is, he cannot pay the consultation fee. Yeah. So <coughs> is it liable on him or not? No. I, I, I forgot to again, there, there was one verse I wrote, I, I spoke about. Uh, there was one word, the, the second part of that verse in Surah Al Mujadala 58 and Ayah 13. Aash faqtum an tuqaddimu bayna yaday najwakum sadaqat fa id lam tafalu wa taab Allahu alaykum faqimu salawatu zaka wa ati Allah wa rasulah wa Allahu khairum ima ta'amalun. Do you feel pity that you advance sadaqa zakat, the charities that is between your hands of your consultation? Now he says, so when you did not or you, it, in other words, you don't have it or you are not in that position and so when you did not do it and Allah will return over you, then establish Salah prayer and give justification, obey Allah and His Messenger and Allah is acquainted with all you do. In the same next ayah, there are people Allah knows that will not be able to give the consultation who are those in the categories. The category people, so Allah said, if you do not give, so again Allah said, Allah, وَطَابَ Allahu alaykum. Faid lam tafalu and you are you are not able to give. Watab Allahu alaykum Allah returns over you or forgive you. Faqimu salah you establish the salah. Waatu zakah you give justification. Watiu Allah wa Rasula and obey Allah and His Messenger. Wallahu khabir bi mata amalun Allah knows that who knows. So if you are in that condition you are not able to give Allah will forgive you. For but you take consultation Allah is not stopping you from not taking consultations. We can from repay it in the future if we have money. No no. At when you don't have it, you don't have to repay. You must remember this. When you have the profit or when you don't have it, don't pay. But if Allah gives you, then you pay. Remember, even profit also, if you don't have profit, don't pay that month or the other, other times. Once you have that, Allah giving you this, uh, the amount, then you give. So the same is with the consultation. You can have the consultation with the, the Quranic eyes. If you have the money to give, otherwise don't give. Thank okay. You. Any other question? If uh, we know, if we are not sure if the other person is needy, and uh, he is still asking for it, and we are not sure if he is actually needy or if he is spending too much, are we still supposed to give and forget about it, or what do you think I am? Just, just for the, just for your knowledge. How do how do you take me as just looking at me and the and the way I'm standing in front of you wearing a suit and everything? No, seriously, really? Uh, I don't think so. What? Not a needy category. Very nice. Now, can you open Surah? Give him the Quran, please. Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 273. These ayahs are for our education. You, are, you asked a very good question. And believe me, most of the people who are, are seeing me for the first time, will their answer will be the same as yours. Right? But what, look what the Quran says, 273. Lil fuqrai ladina, faqir, is in plural is, is the poor people. Sadqa charity is for those poor or sirufi sabila who are restricted in the way of Allah. La yastati'una dharbam filad. They do not have the means to strike in the earth. They cannot earn because I am restricted in the way of Allah. I have dedicated my life in the way of Allah. I do not work. They are restricted in the way of Allah and they, they do not they strike. Yasubul Jahil, an ignorant man, ignorant man thinks he is a rich man. Look, I am reading Yasubum Jahil, Yasubum Jahil Agniya. The ignorant man thinks he is a rich person, Minat because he does not 
ask money, you know, continuously asking, give me money, give me money, all the time. Tarifum bi sihimam, you will recognize, recognize them by their marks, by their, you know, marks. La yasaluna nasa ilhafa, they do not ask money again and again. Wa ma tunfiqu min khairin, whoever spends from the betterment, fa'inna Allah bi alim, surely Allah is knowing wise. By this verse, I have restricted my means. As I was saying, I was a merchant man, I would have continued my career, I would have become the captain, that I was earning. So I give up the career and I come, I made myself as a beggar. I am asking money for so many years doing this job. So I, and this center and everything, I am running all the money. I don't spend it on me, on the cause, on making booklets, on internet channel, all the cause. So apparently I may be looking as a rich person, but I am not. Because I am a beggar, I, my, 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 my category, I am one of the category, I am one of the category. So, but there are other categories, there are miskin, they are just miskin. They have, they, they cannot work properly because this you know, particular situation, situation they have come into. So, they are another category, they are orphans, they are, they are another category. There, there are relatives who are poor, they need to, they are another category. So, Allah has divided men, but specific my category is those people who have dedicated their life for the cause. So they are the poor people also. So what your question was, if somebody you go, you're going, let me finish, and on the road somebody comes in a good clothing also, he asks money for you. And if you have got money, you don't have to ask him what he will do, he will smoke charas or hashish. You give money, whether there is a backing of bad group is involved. You, why? Because I tell you, if you want to find out Okay, whether I'm going to the right person, whether money, my money is being reached, it is not yours. You must think it is not mine. Allah has sent this man so that I take the sawab of it by giving it. You follow what I'm saying? Whenever you, somebody is coming and asking for money from you, you do not ask him from where, do you, why don't you work and this and that. You don't have to do all this. You just give money and salam alaikum. And that is 20% from one of the 20 person, not the whole 20 person. Yeah. One of the category, if some, uh, you can give whatever amount, little amount, give it to him. And then forget. And then even if it, he goes and uh, smokes hashes, that's not your problem. Because you do not know why did he enter that into that situation. What is his background? You don't have, Allah will not question you for all that. But you have done your act by giving that money back to the poor. That is what Allah wants you to do so. He doesn't want you to investigate whether he's right or wrong. And people are giving money not to the Muslim community, they are giving to the Christians. They are giving to the non-Muslims. Not even the Muslim community. I have found out, well, well, they are asking a question, one of the questions asked me, can we give to the Christians? Or can we give to the Hindus and the Buddha? They are also needy people. They are human beings, of course. And these are labeled Muslim also human beings. I am asking you, if you are in a, living in a country and if there, there are no poor people around your locality, then if you're living in this area, okay, give. But at the same time, give some money to the to Muslim community also, because they will be de developed. And at the same time, you must educate to the non-Muslim, if you're giving money, say that Islam teaches us to give it to you, and give him so that he gets inspired by the Islam. Not that you are a rich fellow, you're giving to the poor fellow who is non-Muslim, and he thinks like, that guy is a very nice guy, give us money. No, no. You educate him, I am giving it to you because God says in me in the Quran, this is why I am doing it, this is your money, not even my money. So education might inspire him to become Muslims. Okay? Thank you very much, Brother Moma Sheikh, for your enlightening talk. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude the session for tonight. Um, we would like to thank you all for your attendance. Thank you very much for joining us here. We hope, look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.